Mother of the six year old Virginia boy accused of shooting his first grade teacher will be charged. A Newport News grand jury indicting Deja Taylor today. She's now charged with felony child neglect and misdemeanor recklessly leaving a loaded firearm so as to endanger a child. The shooting happened in January at Rich Neck Elementary School. The Commonwealth's attorney has said no charges are expected to be brought against that six year old. Hey folks, welcome to Yellowhammer Now. I'm Dale Jackson. Today we're going to talk a little bit about guns. And yes, whether it is the Christian school shooting in Nashville, the bank shooting in Louisville, or whatever the next one is going to be, it seems like people are just going to dig themselves in to their already held positions. And that's what people do. And it's not a criticism, it's just a statement of absolute fact. Liberals want to take away your guns and remove them from society. And that is not going to happen. Conservatives will tell you, well, uh, what we need is more guns, both in schools, banks, and wherever else the next one is going to be. And that is not going to happen. So what is the solution? Well, common sense solutions, uh, we sure would love to have those at play if we could just agree on what those common sense solutions actually are. Are they red flag laws? Uh, are they laws that say, okay, you have a mental health issue, so we're not going to allow you uh, to use or possess a firearm? If it is mental health laws, but what happens to the people that tell me that they already don't want to go and get treatment for their depression or PTSD or anxiety because they don't want to end up on some list? What about gender dysphoria? Uh, that's a mental illness that we have now accepted and now we're promoting. What if they try to put that on the list? Uh, will liberals kill the bill if they had some sort of mental health a red flag law list that said, hey, if you have any of these, you can't have firearms? Would people actually get treatment if they were feeling that way, if they knew the end result was they could potentially uh, lose their right uh, to carry uh, a gun or have a gun. Uh, I, I think they probably would. Uh, there was a piece of legislation that I have talked about in the state of Alabama that I found interesting, and it was a piece of legislation by one uh, representative, uh, Barbara Drummond, a Democrat out of Mobile. It's about holding parents accountable if their child brings a firearm to school that was improperly secured. Uh, there are a lot of questions about this. She says Nathaniel Ledbetter, the Republican Speaker of the House, says this is a, a good bill and they'll have a conversation about it. Uh, she says she's ready to drop it uh, from a felony to a misdemeanor. And all of that's fine, although that's dealing with things after the fact uh, and not necessarily dealing with the root cause of the problem. And there's another wrinkle in it as well. Uh, let's take a look at a report out of Virginia Beach yesterday where we found a parent being charged under a very similar law there. Never put a teacher shot. Tonight, three months after the shocking school shooting, the mother of the six-year-old Virginia boy who shot and seriously wounded his first grade teacher is facing criminal charges. Today, a grand jury in Newport News indicting 25-year-old Deja Taylor on charges of felony child neglect and a misdemeanor count of recklessly leaving a loaded firearm so as to endanger a child. Who would be prepared for a six-year-old to bring a, a loaded weapon onto school or a, a weapon onto school. After authorities announced the six-year-old would not be charged with a crime, the Commonwealth's attorney saying today, every criminal case is unique in its facts, and these facts support these charges, but our investigation into the shooting continues. I just will never forget the look on his face that he gave me while he pointed the gun directly at me. That's something that I will never forget. It, it's changed me. It's changed my life. Now, why is that law important to this conversation? Well, allegedly, that handgun was secured. Six feet up in the air on a closet shelf with a lock on the trigger. Do I believe that? No. But that's the early reporting in the story. And I asked Barbara Drummond about a, a kind of similar situation before this case even came down. I have a firearm in my home, but I have a biometric lock. Now, I have a biometric lock, and I keep that firearm secured, although not behind lock and key because it has a biometric lock on it. I'm the only one who can use it. My wife can't even use it. Um, and, you know, so I, I think it is relatively secured. But my son, in theory, could pick up that firearm with its biometric lock on it put it in his book bag, and take it to school. 
it's it's secured. It can't be used. I mean, I guess you could maybe at some point pry that lock off. Maybe you might be able to do that with some tools or something. But in under in your theory, have I done enough to avoid a misdemeanor if my son's caught with one? Well, if if you look if you look at the law, I kept the language very very sort of loose as for secured. If law enforcement says that this weapon didn't it didn't go off because you as that child's father had that gun secured, and it would be no charges against you because you had the gun secured. So in this scenario, that biometric lock that I spoke about, this case in Virginia. Uh, apparently a key lock, she still got charged. Now, my guess is the key was probably in the lock or readily available, or she's just lying and the police don't believe uh, what she's saying here. But again, all of this is yet another reason why conservatives will find laws like these uh, to be hard to get behind because it appears that there's a lot of questions about how they will be enforced. And, and I think that's a very fair question. And it casts a distrust o- over the entire system. So, again, taking all these situations together, the mass shootings, uh, this particular piece uh, of legislation, what do we end with? Well, we end with liberals saying we should do more gun control and conservatives saying no, no, we should not. Uh, it is, again, an untenable situation that doesn't really have many solutions. Keep in mind, not too long ago, a bipartisan bill that's been declared a bipartisan bill uh, was passed by Congress. You're not really hearing too much about that or what impact that had on this. Of course, you don't hear about mass shootings that don't happen. So that's another part that you have to discuss. Uh, America, we have an issue. And I don't know what the solution is. I don't have an answer to give you here on the end, a bill you could pass or something like that. Uh, I will support things that seem like common sense to me, but common sense to me is not common sense uh, to everyone. And there's just a lot of people who are incredibly frustrated uh, with how this current situation is going. What can we do to make the world a, a safer place? You can't remove every gun from the street. You can't put cops on every corner and in every liquor store. What can we actually do? I don't have the answer to that question. I, like everyone else, am just asking it.